Today, we're going to be going over the JLF Pro modding kit and how to actually mod your Sanwa JLF. Also in this video, I'm going to show you my go-to parts on what I like to use out of this JLF Pro modding kit. Now, arcade stick modding is incredibly subjective. It's like cooking steak. I like my steak medium rare, but you might like it well done. Well, there's something wrong with you. Oh, I'm just kidding, but not really. As long as you're not doing this. <laughs> anyway, the best thing about this video is I want you to enjoy your arcade stick the way you like it, because ultimately we want my stick is better than bacon. Now, as of filming this video, the JLF modding kit is currently available on the Arcade Shock website for $27.99. The link will be in the description box below. The only tool that we are going to need today is going to be a flathead screwdriver. Now, you can actually do this mod with the joystick. Let's try that again. You can do this modification with the joystick inside your case, or you can do it extracted. Either or, if you have a brand new JLF, you can do it outside the stick or you can do it inside. Either one, whatever floats your boat, just make sure the shaft doesn't fall on the floor. Now the kit comes with four springs. Oh, good God! Pixel? He's going through a phase. Okay. All the springs in the kit are going to give you extra tension. So the stock spring that is currently in the JLF is approximately one pound. And it stays fairly consistent all the way through from, from where you push from neutral all the way to the end point. Now, out of the four, you're gonna get two, what we're gonna call progressive springs. They're gonna start at a certain tension load. And as you push it away or closer to your end point, it's gonna get stronger. Those are our short squatty springs, which are our purple and the yellow. The other springs are more consistent-ish type of tension starting from the point of neutral to the end point. And those are gonna be the longer spring. Now, let's start with the lowest resistance to the highest resistance. Our purple squatty thing, which I'm not gonna call it purple. It's more kind of magenta -y. The magenta -y spring is starts at about one pound worth of tension. But as you push it out, it's gonna go to about 1.5-ish. So then we get to our blue spring, and the blue spring is our consistent spring. 1.5, once you start pushing it out, at the end point, it's still about 1.5. Now, then we have the yellow spring. Now, this one's just delectable. This is my favorite spring. You guys may like it, you guys may hate it, but it starts at approximately 1.3 pounds of force, and at the end result, ends up to being about two pounds. And then the red spring ends up being two pounds at start and about two pounds at the end. So now the question lies is why a progressive spring? A progressive spring would hypothetically would allow you to get faster to your actuation point of the micro switch while still sustaining that nice, fast, snappy return back to neutral with uh, the peak load being higher than what it would be to come out. So that's why. I like it. So we get four springs, we get four gates, but hypothetically speaking, we technically only get three actuators because the black actuator is the stock actuator. It's something that you already have, in theory, already on your JLF. Now, with these actuators, they're going from smallest to largest. And the largest point of the actuator is where the measurement was originally taken by San Juan. So if we go by the black actuator, which is our stock actuator, the measurement is actually 15.8 millimeters. Now going up from that with the white one, it is 16.2. The blue is 16.45 and the red is 16.7. So the question lies is why would you want a bigger actuator? Well, the actuator is gonna make it so you get to your micro switch faster. So that means there is less of a dead zone when it comes to moving your arcade stick. Now another thing to note, as the uh, width of the actuator gets bigger, so does where it sits on the actual joystick shaft itself. So the narrow point is actually bigger as well. 
The narrow part of the actuator is what's going to be resting on the restrictor gate. That's how you play. So with the black one is approximately 10.7 millimeters. The white one is ever so slightly bigger, but I still caught it at about 10.7. So we'll call it a big 10.7. It's like 10.7 and some change. Now, when we get to the blue one, it's quite a bit different. We are looking at about 11.3 millimeters and the red ends up being a 12 millimeter even. So what does it all mean? It just means that the bigger the actuator also means that it's gonna get to the restrictor gate faster. So that just means a shorter throw for your joystick. Chef. Okay, now we have the restrictor gates. We have a circle, our octagonal, a square with notch directions or the main cardinal directions. And we have a quasi squircle with Two notch directions? Now we have the circle restrictor gate, which exactly is just that. There are no corners, there's no bumps. It is smooth black butter, 360 degrees all the way around. Now the dilemma with that is your cardinal directions are a little bit bigger, which I think most people would like. However, your diagonals are a bit smaller. So personal preference. Now the octagonal gate is gonna be very similar to the circle in the aspect that you lose out on the size of your diagonals, but you do gain in the cardinal directions. However, because it is an octagonal gate, you do get to feel all eight points of your joystick. So you know when down is down, you know when up is up, and you know when down back is down back, and blah, 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 blah. Now, even though the circle and the octagonal gate have been around for a while with Sanwa, these next two, are actually new to Sanwa, but maybe not necessarily in joysticks in general because they've been around with Samitsu. And what I'm talking about is gonna be the square gate with notches in it. So that way you know where up is up and down and down and left is left and right is right. And when it comes to the square gate, the big difference when it comes to this one is that your diagonals are bigger. But because your diagonals are bigger, you do lose out on your main cardinal direction. Now the last one is blue. A brand spanking new. I've not seen one like this yet. It is like a quasi squircle. So where the notches were hypothetically would be on the blue, the top and the bottom, it's slightly more rounded. But we do still have two notches on where the hypothetically left and right would be. But now you can take this orientation and change it if you want. So if you want those notches to be up and down, not on left and right, you can do so as well. Okay, enough with the talk, let's get to modding. Take your Sanwa JLF, flip that bugger upside down. Once it's upside down, you have these four black tabs. What you're going to do is basically try to push them all in at the same time. And as they're all in, try to wiggle the clear restrictor plate off of the joystick. Do it a little bit at a time and try to get all of them evenly. Now remove the PCB micro switches. If this is currently inside your case, it is not necessary for you to unplug it. However, do remember the orientation on where the wires were coming from, whether it was the left or the right or the up or the down. Just remember, you'll need it. Take a picture, even better. You will next need your flathead screwdriver. From here, push down on the actuator to compress the spring of the JLF. Use your screwdriver to slightly put it inside the little E-clip hole and you're going to push away from the shaft while twisting your screwdriver at the same time to remove the E-clip. For the love of God, don't let go of the actuator yet. At least not until you're prepared. Do it slowly so the spring doesn't shoot out at you. Now from here, remove that boring old spring and pick the color that you desire. For me, I'm picking yellow. From there, we're going to change the actuator if you like. I'm picking the red one. Now, we're going to put the E-clip back on by using the flathead screwdriver. Now, if you want, you could just use some needle nose pliers, but us pros like to do it with the screwdriver. I'm potentially gonna save you guys an extra step. Now, I assume that I could use the old restrictor gate system, pop out the center and everything's all peachy king. But no, Sanwa redesigned the entire restrictor gate and insert system. That's actually a much easier now, but the old one, you have no use unless you're gonna go back to it later. Set it aside or chuck it at somebody you don't like. Once you reinserted the center into the gate, 
set that aside for a second. Now, what we're going to do is put back the micro switch PCB. Remember the way you did it last time. And then from here, we're going to snap that gate back into place. Now, one thing to keep in mind is if you are using the blue insert, make sure you are orienting it the way you want, whether you want the notches to be up and down or if you want the notches to be left or right. Yay, you did it! So now you have a wonderfully color-coded Sanwa JLF that is hopefully to your preference. In the comment section down below, let me know what your favorite combination is. And one last thing to note, if some of you very special individuals that have a Sanjux V3, these springs are also compatible with that as well. You're welcome. And hopefully this makes your stick is better than bacon. Oh, hey! Would you look at that? That cookie bastard's been busy. Oh my God! Pixel, stay out of the Carolina Reapers. Hey, do me a favor. Slap me a Fonz, hit that subscribe button, and ding-a-ding-dong that bell for all the crazy shit we do here.